the prayer gift, the gift of prayer. And it really is what a wonderful gift God's got for us to pray. Every one of us can talk to Jesus Christ. I do want to make mention it's so wonderful for Brianna and Briasia to get baptized in Jesus' name. They made great decisions. Amen. We love them. Keep them in your prayers. God will strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so Matthew chapter 17, beginning at verse 20, Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible <laughs> unto you. And I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. Because I believe everybody in southwest South Georgia is going to get the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name. And it may take a little while. It doesn't say it could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. It may take a while. But we're just going to keep chopping wood. Hallelujah. Verse 21. How be it this kind. It was a satanic spirit they were fighting. So there's different categories of satanic spirits. A kind is like a genus. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And so prayer and fasting opens the impossible to the believer. Let's ask God to open our hearts to receive everything he's got out of his word tonight. God, I glorify you. I love you. I'm so grateful for these that came out to church on this 23rd. God, God, just we cast all our care upon you because you care for us. This busyness, this shopping, this cooking, this baking, this wrapping and everything it sometimes be kind of stressful but God let our focus be on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I worship you and I love you speak through this vessel and open all of our hearts wherever we're at God to receive the word of Christ with meekness in Jesus name and if you don't mind let's everybody say in Jesus name in Jesus name God bless you you can be seated in the name of the Lord well, this week, we were confronted with a once-in-every-800-year event, and it was a convergence of Saturn and Jupiter. And it was supposed to be this incredible thing, and it probably was. I think I looked at it at the wrong time. After the Christmas banquet, we went out on a very dark road. And, uh, Sister Waldron, Brother David, Sister Janice, and I, we went on this dark road. We went home the back way, and we looked, and we think we found it. But uh, it did not look like that T-shaped star that is so famous. It quickly became an internet meme that I feel like I've been lied to my whole life. I was promised this, and I got this. But you know, with Jesus, <laughs> there's no false promises and there's no letdown. If anything, it's more than that. It's better than you ever thought it could be. Life is so much better. So in Matthew 17, verses 20 and 21, he tells us two things, that if we've got faith as a grain of mustard seed, we shall say unto this mountain, this mount of transfiguration, whichever mountain that was, the discussion for another time, shall remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Now I will tell you, that is an enormous amount of power to tell an entire mountain to remove. But yet, that's the power we've got in prayer. But then he goes beyond that. He says, now, not only this mountain, but he indicates every mountain on earth, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. So when you and I have Jesus, the impossible all of a sudden becomes the possible. Now, there's so many reasons we don't get our prayers answered. First of all, the Bible says in James 4, 4, 4, 2, excuse me, we have not because we ask not. So sometimes we don't ask, and this is the reason we do not receive answered prayer, simply because we fail to ask. We think God should automatically know what we have need of, and he does, but he still wants us to ask. He shall have whatsoever he saith, we're going to read in just a little bit. We're also going to read about a secret key to answered prayer that is mentioned so much by Jesus, it has significance, and that is forgiveness. If you and I have any unforgiveness in our heart at all, somehow that blocks up the blessings of God in our life, and we cannot see prayers answered. 
And so let's take a look at this. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23 says this. We're going to look at three different passages in Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So what can happen in prayer? Anything. There are no limitations with God. Could America become a Christian nation again? Of course it could. Could presidents, regardless if it's Biden or Trump or anybody else, get the Holy Ghost? Of course they could. Could Pence and Harris get the Holy Ghost? Of course they can. Can McConnell, Schumer, Pelosi, Ryan, all of the above get the Holy Ghost? Yes. Could Governor Kemp get the Holy Ghost? You better believe it. Could Raffensperger get the Holy Ghost? Could uh, Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan get the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Could 100 people get healed in one service? You better believe it. Could 1,000 people get healed in one service? Oh, yeah. How much power would God still have left when all those things happen? All power. He is not like we see a gallon of tea and we pour it and when it's poured into a glass all of a sudden an eighth of that gallon is gone. God's not like that. You can pour and pour and pour and pour and there's just as much. There is no limits with God. I'm thankful for no limits in God. Hallelujah. Now in Mark chapter 10 verse 27 So we've already seen all things are possible to him that believeth In Mark chapter 10 verse 27 It says this And Jesus looking upon them saith with men It is impossible But not with God For with God All things are possible In the Bible You have public prayer You have private prayer You have corporate prayer You have prayer closets You have pray without ceasing he shall make his house a house of prayer. We're the house of God. So we're a house of prayer. We should just be praying all the time. I remember Keith Green had an amazing song that had a deep impact on my life many years ago. And the name of the song is Make My Life a Prayer to You. I want to do what you want me to. No empty words, no white lies, no token prayers, no compromise. It's a great song. And so... Make my life a prayer to you. So impossible things become possible with God. Prayer is opening the gifts God has for his children. I will say this. The problems in the United States of America are easily fixable with prayer. Because prayer changes things and it gets us in alignment with God. And then Christian living, holiness, true Christian living will be the result. So we've looked at Mark 9, 23, Mark 10, 27. Let's go to Mark 11, 23. This Christmas season, I mean, you want to open up some gifts. Open up the gift of prayer. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. And it's year round. It's not just one day a year. 11, 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast, thou cast into the sea. Now, it didn't matter what sea was talking about. If it was the Sea of Galilee, which would have in all probability been to at least his east, or the Mediterranean Sea, which would have been to the west, doesn't matter what sea. He could have been talking about the Atlantic Ocean or the Caspian Sea. If you pray, God will work. Now, sometimes time is the biggest enemy between our prayers and God's answers. We pray, God, deliver me, and things get worse. Now, that happened in the Bible, too. Every time Moses would go before Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron, let my people go. Well, the burden's going to be worse. <laughs> things got worse. Maybe not every day, but there was times when things got worse. This is how it gets in prayer sometimes. It's like, okay, God, I'm really fired up now, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm going to do it. And what immediately happens, things get worse. So we can't look at circumstances. We have to look at the God of the circumstances. God's got all power. So never look at the circumstances. Look at God. Look at God. And so God dwells in eternity, so he does it in his time. All right, so this mountain be thou removed, cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. You ever heard anybody say, I'm just going to try Jesus? 
you got to live for Jesus. Well, I tried everything else. I guess I'll try Jesus. No, you can't doubt in your heart. No doubt in your heart. You have to believe. And, and that's one thing. When you're praying for somebody, you know the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Mark 16. You can't doubt when you're praying. Don't ever doubt. You know, when I'm praying for somebody, I, I, I try, and, and I hope I'm usually successful in this, that I'm not sitting here thinking, well, maybe it's not God. Maybe God just wants to keep them sick to teach them a lesson, teach, you know, chastening of the Lord. Maybe they brought the sickness in their little side. That's not in my brain. Thank the Lord. Now, maybe there is on occasion, but I'm just praying. I'm like, God, you're going to heal this person, and I believe everybody's going to get healed. I, I really, when we have prayer lines, prayer time up here at the altar, it's not in my mind that people are not going to get healed. I'm 55, but I try to be young spiritually. you got to become as a little child. And fa Daddy told me, you know, this is one reason it is not good to lie to children. You know, you start telling the children, well, Santa this, Santa that, and all that. Be very careful. <laughs> because all of a sudden, when they're nine, they're like, you lied to me my whole life. Because children will believe whatever you say. I know a lot of people like to joke with children and like to just kind of, you know, tell them like a child is bewildered because they believe everything that's said. Well, I want I'm a child of God. I want to believe everything Daddy said. So when I'm praying over somebody, it's like so I, there's nobody more shocked when somebody's not healed then I, I'm just like, well, it, you know, we need to just pray again because it's going to happen. Eventually it's going to happen. And so now get this. But shall believe that those things which he saith, if you don't mind, let's everybody say saith, saith, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. God wants you and I to speak it out. So I can pray in my heart. Yeah, the Bible talks a few times. Hannah praying in her heart. Uh, Eleazar, Abram's servant, praying in his heart. Maybe some other instances praying in their heart. But God wants you to, it starts in Genesis 1. God spoke things. God wants us to speak. You believe, therefore you speak. So God wants us to say things. He wants us to pray. He wants us to, if you believe it enough to say it. All right. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Can you say amen? All right. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, what sort of thing you desire? Going back to James 4, verses 2 and 3, it says that some people don't get what they ask for because they ask amiss that they may heap it upon their own lust. You know, God, I know there's a billion starving children in the world. God, I know there's seven billion people going to hell. God, I know all this. But God, number one prayer request is, I need a mansion. No. That's why you're not getting it. God, I, you know, don't even thank God for the vehicle you've got. Just say, God, I'm looking for the new Lamborghini. Mr. Beast will be coming in my life anytime. Publisher's clearing house is going to, I'm on speed dial. And I hope somebody wins Publisher's clearing house. That'd be wonderful. But it's priorities. Does everybody say priorities? Priorities is, God, I want to be like you. I want you to make me in your image after your likeness, God. I want to live for you. I want to be holy. God, I want the world saved. All these other things will be added unto you, Scripture says. So therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. So we've got to make sure that our desires match up with God. Working in a Bible college and working with a lot of young people, here's what happens. Young people don't say, I want a good apostolic husband or wife. The young people are saying, God, let's say it's a girl, I want him to be Hispanic, 6'2", and I want a little swoop with the gel in their hair. 
I've heard it all the time. It's like, no, no, pray that they're apostolic. Pray they're just living for Jesus. Everything else. Well, no, God, you said, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Sister Walter and I have known a lot of people in their 30s still waiting to get married. Because they well, I, he said he'd give me the desires of my heart. So I just did X, 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 X. I'm just, well, did, did, uh, were they living for Jesus? Did they love God? Did you pray if it was the will of God? Nope, I've got the image of a perfect woman or the perfect man, and they didn't do it. Okay, we need to keep going here. Verse 25, get myself in trouble there, hallelujah. And when you stand praying, forgive. Now notice this, there's many times in Scripture people are on their knees praying, they're prostrate on the floor praying, here they're standing praying. That's multiple times in the Gospels. So the position, or the position of our heart is more important than the position of our bodies. The position, humble our heart. So when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught, anything, offense against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. We talk a lot about the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to turn there, Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse number 9. But so many people are praying with unforgiveness in their heart. I see it all the time. When I talk to people, they'll bring up something, not that I did per se, but anything. It may have happened five years ago. It may have happened six years ago. And they have bitterness. They'll have bitterness in their heart against God. God, you could have changed this person and you didn't. And so they're now a thorn in my flesh. They're the cross I care every day. God, I don't like that. And they've got unforgiveness against God. They've got unforgiveness against. Did you know that this person didn't shake my hand five years ago? I'm like, you know, his mercies are new every morning. Okay, this is some of those things you're supposed to cast our care, our worries upon the Lord because he cares for us. You shouldn't be carrying those grudges around. You should not. It's every day, and we're going to see that in the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse number 9, Jesus said, after this manner or this pattern, and uh, in Luke, he actually says, say these words. Okay, but after this manner, after this pattern, therefore pray ye, our Father. Notice, everybody says, well, I can make it myself and all this. But notice this, the Lord's Prayer is our Father. You are joined. You're not the only one saved. You're in a body. All right? Our Father, which art in heaven, heaven how would be thy name thy is singular r is plural o u r how would be thy name so it's like okay i'm coming to you as one of millions you can hear everybody at once and there's actually people i've been asked this before in my life uh multiple times people would say well can god hear everybody at once i've had people say well you know i didn't want to pray during church because I wanted God to hear everybody else's prayers. And mine could wait. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. There's some people that think it works like that. God can hear everybody. Our Father, which art in heaven. Now, if he's our Father, he's our creator. He's our begatter. He's our Savior. And he cares for us. Hallowed be thy name. So often that my life, especially when I've been going through a trial, when I go to pray, maybe I get down on my knees, but when I go to pray, close my eyes, talk to Jesus, uh, there's, it's like I'm sitting in the lap of God. You may have that experience as well. But it's just, you're just, it's like, Dad, I need you. I've got to have you. It's way better than Santa Claus. Santa Claus does not exist. Jesus does. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name and so it's like so the name represents everything he is God your name is to be hallowed Jesus our savior when we say Jesus it unlocks all the blessings he's got for us hallowed be thy name thy 
kingdom come. So the first place the kingdom needs to come, the kingdom of God is within. God, sit on the throne of my heart. And then begin on, sit on the throne of my family, of my family members, of my neighbors, my neighborhood, my city. Thy kingdom come. Because it's coming. There'll be a day when the kingdom of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. The earth is already the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but there is just a little tiny outpost of rebellion, Lucifer, Satan, the little G God of this world, going around trying to mess up everything. But it is temporary. People that are against God, they are but flesh, and they are their life is but a vapor. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So it's not his will that any should perish. All should come to repentance and everlasting life, Second Peter 3, 9. So thy will be done. When you pray for souls, you're praying the will of God be done. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. In America, we may be... Many people don't thank God for daily bread because we've always had so much. But friend, most of the world doesn't. I thank God for daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's talking about physical debts and that's talking about material like sin. Forgive us our debts. So give us this day our daily bread. Verse 11, so the Lord's prayer is something to be prayed every day. So every day, God, forgive me of my sins, my failures, my shortcomings, my bad attitudes, the ways I'm not aligning to Scripture. Forgive me of that as we forgive our debtors. Today I was at the post office, and there was a guy in the post office. He was so mad. He did not have holiday joy. He was furious. And he might be watching this on YouTube. I don't know. But he was mad. And he was yelling. And he was screaming. And he was red-faced. And he was stomping. And I was so impressed with the lady behind the counter at the post office. Because she never batted an eye. She was just like, I am so sorry, sir. That is just human error. We made the mistake. We'll do the best we can. And he was mad that she wasn't mad. And so he wouldn't let it go. I'm standing in line. I'm just trying to send out gifts to preachers because I'm a presbyter and I'm trying to send out gifts. And I'm like, so, you know, they said, well, you know, we're so far behind, they'll probably get it the middle of January. I'm like, that's fine. I text the preachers. I said, look, I sent my gifts today. You're good at the middle of January. It's okay. But he was mad. He was not a happy camper. But And this lady just, it, it, I mean, she just, she was, look, she was very respectful, very kind, but she just didn't let it bother. There's so many things. Christians don't need to be hypersensitive to slights, faults, words from others. We should be sensitive to the Spirit of God, but insensitive to what people say about us. Jesus said when people talk about you, leap for joy, dance. I mean, just get excited about it. So, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. They talked bad about Jesus. They said Jesus multiple times. Read your Bible. They said he was demon-possessed. So, just get to where it's just like, oh, well, you know, I know God loves me, and I know I'm right with God. Now, constructive criticism, if somebody says that I'm wrong, and I compare it with the Bible, have reproof and correction, I'm like, oh, man, they're right. I need to change. God help me change. Then I'm very glad they said what they said. It just, it, it doesn't bother me. All right. Or at least try the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, quenching every fire dart of the wicked one. All right. Just think if there were sensitive Marines and the Marine drill sergeant yelling and screaming at them and insulting their family and spitting all over them and everything. You know, and the Marine, part of what the military is all about is to make you insensitive to criticism. Well, you're in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So I know everybody's excited. So, verse 
12, forgive us our debts, our sins, as we forgive our debtors. So you should never, if you're still upset over what something did to you, somebody did to you five years ago, biblically what you've got to do is you've got to pray and you've got to get right with God because it's going to skew your entire walk with Jesus. You're going to look at everything. Everything's going to be, you know, if everything uh, looks like a nail, what are you, a hammer? I forget how that goes. You know, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so if you, you know, if you're back, everything looks like an offense. Everybody's again, everybody, they should, they, blah, blah. Verse 13, lead us not into temptation. Did you know there's some temptations you fall into because maybe you didn't pray, lead us not into temptation? But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, look at verse 14. It's all really part of the Lord's Prayer. The new paragraph doesn't start till verse 16. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The key, one of the big keys to answered prayer is to asking God to forgive everybody who has trespassed against you I had a good friend of mine that was one of his weaknesses is he could not get he could not ask people to forgive he could not forgive people and I'd say well you just need to forgive them he'd say they haven't asked yet God doesn't forgive people till they ask I'm like well you know on the cross Jesus said father forgive them for they know what they do and they didn't ask unforgiveness hurts you not the object of your unforgiveness it does not hurt them in the least it hurts you your little thoughts of revenge and all this so a huge key for answered prayer is to ask forgiveness to be sure you have asked forgiveness let's go over just a few more scriptures very quickly Matthew chapter 9 verse 38 pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest verse 37 the harvest truly is plenteous but the labors are few so we need to be asking God God send forth labors into your harvest the harvest is plenteous that is a prayer request that we need to ask Jesus was a great example of prayer. He was a person of prayer. Even though he was God, he also had humanity. He had sonship in his deity. And so you read throughout the Gospels, he was constantly praying. Major events in his life, right before the crucifixion, what is he doing? He's praying. Before he chooses the twelve, he's praying. Psalm 68 verse 19 says this Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits Even the God of our salvation Sometimes we have not because we ask not God is backing up the dump truck full of benefits and blessings And we don't ask Again I've heard some people and they're well intentioned They say well the reason I don't ask is because I want everybody else to get them. Did you know he can bless everybody and you can still get yours? God cares for you. We are the apple of his eye. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, verse number 3, tells us a little bit about the promises of God. God says this, Call unto me or pray, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Not only is that a great verse for biblical interpretation but when we pray God's going to work in ways we can be a part and I believe we are if the Lord tarries we're going to be part of the greatest revival in human history I just believe that I'm 100% sold on that fact you know do I want the church full on Wednesday night Bible study you better believe it but till that happens I just keep praying you can ask Sister Waldron pretty much every Wednesday. I'll pray. We'll pray together in the morning. And I'll say, God, give us the greatest Wednesday night church ever. Do I pray? <laughs> yes. And so two people got baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My old pastor, he just always told me. He would say it was actually his pastor's dad. 
He'd say, you know what, son? He said, if you'll throw out good food, sheep will come and eat. So call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Before you attack the pastor, maybe you need to know who's sheep, goats, and wolves. All right. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians, the third chapter. We're just looking at some of the things God can do in prayer. Verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, a lot there, a lot to unpack there. But we've already seen with God, nothing's going to be impossible. With God, all things are possible. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. When we pray, we shouldn't be thinking, okay, I prayed this and God will probably do here. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And it's according to the power that worketh. It never stops working on the inside of you. Every night in the morning when you get the Holy Ghost, the power of God's working on the inside of us. I'm so thankful. Why don't we just thank the Lord for that? Hallelujah. God, I glorify you. You're able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think according to your power that worketh in us. The creator lives on the inside of you and I. One last scripture tonight, God willing, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. We don't get to Habakkuk a lot of times. When I was growing up, you know, my family all grew tobacco. I'm not sanctioning that. I'm just telling you a reality. They called it Baca. Baca. Oh, the Baca fields over there. And then we had rabbit tobacco, rabbit tobacco. And we would try to do various things we shouldn't have been doing with that. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. What that has to do with Habakkuk is the similarity in pronunciation and nothing else. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's say it one more time. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's a promise of God. Church, I just want to tell you, God's gifts to us unwrap the gift of prayer every day. I'm really feeling in the Holy Ghost one of the themes of uh, the year 2021 for all of us is making it a year of prayer, a year of sacrifice, a year of love, but a year, a year of prayer because we have not because we ask not. Another one of my prayers that I'm constantly praying is, God, make new life the greatest praying church anywhere. Just make us a, a church of praying. And, uh, and many of you are amazing prayer warriors, and I am so grateful. And God's going to raise up more prayer. There's going to be people, I firmly believe this, that you didn't think, but they're going to be raised up as amazing prayer warriors. And there's probably already people that are prayer warriors that nobody knows but they are prayer warriors. So in wrapping the gift of prayer this Christmas season, why don't we pray together? Why don't we stand to our feet, and if you can, and why don't we just offer ourselves living sacrifices to Jesus, hallelujah, and to be used of God in this great, great ministry of prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, we know all things are possible in prayer. God, every bill can be paid through prayer. Every soul can be won through prayer. Every damaged relationship can be mended through prayer. God, we just praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, and God, we just ask you to let us have the greatest holiday season that we've ever had, God. Great church on Sunday, God. Let us all be fantastic witnesses to our relatives, Lord Jesus. Let all our relatives, let there be a great mass revival amongst our relatives, God. And we glorify you. We love you. And Jesus, continue. Please protect us from COVID, God. Protect everybody at church from COVID. In Jesus' name, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, these gifts we are able to give, being a blessing to the community, thankful for that, God. In Jesus' name, why don't we just thank him again. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.